grade 12s. Today's lesson is on other definitions that we have for acids and bases. We've already discussed Arrhenius and his idea that an acid was anything that started with hydrogen and would liberate hydrogen ions when you put it in water, and a base is anything that contained hydroxide and liberated hydroxide ions when you put them in water. There were a few issues with um, Arrhenius's definition where some things that we thought might be acids turned out not to be. And so there was some weaknesses there, but also there were some substances that didn't have hydroxides that did indeed turn out to be bases. Bronson and Laurie are two scientists who came up with another definition that kind of helps take over some of these problems. Bronson and Laurie thinks about whether or not a substance wants to donate a proton also known as a hydrogen ion, or whether or not it wants to accept a proton onto itself. Acids are anything that have hydrogens that are willing to donate. Bases are anything that will accept a proton onto themselves. All the acids that Arrhenius talked about are included in Bronson and Laurie's theory, and there are some more that he didn't even include. There are also some substances that were not included in Arrhenius's theory that are included now in the bronson lorry theory. Take a look at this equation that we have. NH3 is ammonia. Let's not confuse this with NH4+, plus, which is ammonium. Ammonia is a base. Now, Arrhenius would have looked at all those hydrogens and thought, gee, could this possibly be an acid? But no, because when you put it into water, no protons are freed up. When you put ammonia into water, what happens is we end up forming the ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. Because ammonia was what accepted a proton from the water, ammonia is a proton acceptor, and by Bronson and Lorry's definition is a base. Because water was the species that ended up giving up its proton in this equation, it was a proton donor and is considered to be a bronsillory acid. On the product side of the equation, ammonium and hydroxide are shown as being formed. Since this is an equilibrium situation, in the reverse reaction, ammonium, the NH4+, would act as an acid and the OH would act as a base. These are called the conjugates. Let me show you how this might work. Here we see the ammonia molecule and the water molecule. Ammonia has a lone pair of unbonded electrons, and water, we notice, has two lone pairs of unbonded electrons. When I put ammonia into water, the molecules will mix together and what tends to happen is the water molecule tends to orient itself so that its positive hydrogen end becomes attracted to that lone pair on the nitrogen of the ammonia. At this point, the weakest link that is available is this bond between the hydrogen of the water and the remaining hydroxide molecule. That arm can break off, and what we are left with is this NH4 grouping, my ammonium, and the OH grouping, the hydroxide. Because hydrogen here lost its electron when the hydroxide floated away, the ammonium has a charge of plus one, and the hydroxide with that extra electron that it kept from the hydrogen has an overall charge of minus one. So consider again what happened. The NH3 molecule accepted this proton, this hydrogen, from the water. The resultant was forming NH4+. Water donated its proton, his hydrogen, and its resulting was hydroxide. In the reverse reaction, this hydrogen will move back onto the water, therefore ammonium is considered a conjugate acid, and hydroxide will accept it, and it is considered a conjugate base. Conjugate acid and base pairing, pairings are often drawn with connecting line. 
it is important to realize that a base and its conjugate acid, or an acid and its conjugate base, will differ by only one proton, in other words, one hydrogen ion with a plus one charge. Let's take a look at what we could form if we have acids, which are proton donors. What would be their conjugate bases? Remember, these can only differ by one proton with a charge of plus one. If H2SO4, sulfuric acid, was going to act as an acid according to Bronsted and Lowry theory, it should donate a proton. What then would be its conjugate base? Because one hydrogen will have come off of the H2SO4, there will only be one hydrogen left remaining. We will now have H1 or HSO4. When the hydrogen left, it took a charge of plus one with it. So the charge on the hydrogen sulfate ion has dropped down by one. The conjugate base for H2SO4 is HSO4 minus. You'll notice that the only thing that is different between the acid and its conjugate base is one hydrogen and a charge of plus one. What then would happen when HCl as an acid loses its proton? Again, liberating just one hydrogen and a charge of plus one, we would be left with chlorine ion, chloride ion. The only difference between hydrochloric acid and chloride ion is one proton and a charge of plus one. This is an acid and its conjugate base. Suppose I give you these two species as bases. What then would be their conjugate acids? Remember, bases are proton acceptors. So to these species, we will have to add one hydrogen and increase the charge by one. In these cases, HSO4 minus will turn into H2SO4. You notice that we have one more hydrogen than before and the charge has gone up by one. NaClO will now become HNaClO and where it's had a charge of zero before, its charge is now plus one. In cases where it's not immediately obvious where to put the hydrogen, it is usually considered correct to add it to the beginning of the molecule. In the following example, identify the conjugate acid base pairings. HF, hydrogen fluoride, is going to react with water. We should know from our practice on naming acids that any time we start with hydrogen, we can give something an acid name. This would also be called hydrofluoric acid. Because it's called hydrofluoric acid, I'm going to assume that this is an acid. By Bronson and Lowry's definition, if it donates a hydrogen, then it will be an acid. On the product side of the equation, we see that the HF has turned into F minus one. It has indeed changed by only one hydrogen and a charge of plus one. Hydrogen fluoride was our acid, and fluoride then becomes its conjugate base. Continuing on, Water, we know, is amphoteric. It could act as an acid or a base. Because we see H2O turn into H3O+, plus, we can see that the water has gained a proton. Anything that gains a proton is considered to be a base. H3O+, plus, then, will be the conjugate acid. Why is it that I will call H plus and H3O+, plus a proton. And why am I calling them a proton anyway? Consider the hydrogen atom. Hydrogen is made up of one proton in its nucleus and one electron orbiting in its outer shell. When hydrogen atom forms an ion, the electron is lost. We now have hydrogen plus one ion. Because all that is left, is a proton, hydrogen plus one ion is often referred to simply as a proton. So what about that H3O plus molecule? What's going on with that? Remember our water molecule has those two unpaired, unshared electron pairs that we have on this oxygen? Well, this proton is very, very attracted to the 
water molecule and would like to come and sit itself right down on the end of the water molecule. Remember what this is now. This positive charge, this proton, is the H plus one ion. So we can draw this like this. Or more accurately, we can refer to it as hydrogen with a plus one charge. This grouping now, this grouping has one oxygen and three hydrogens. We write the formula for it as H3O plus, and it has a name that we call hydronium. So H plus ion is nothing left but a proton. And when that proton is floating in water, it tends to find itself stuck to a water molecule. And so when it does that, we call it hydronium. In this unit, we're going to consider the H plus one ion, the proton, and the H3O plus, the hydronium ion, as being the same thing. Essentially, they are. Hydronium just more accurately tells us where that hydrogen plus one ion is sitting in the solution. Our final definition of acids and bases came up by Lewis. Remember Lewis dot diagrams? We did them a lot in grade 10 and 11. Lewis always likes looking at electrons. That was the point of his dot diagram. What are the electrons doing? And so he turned the entire theory of what it is to be an acid or a base from the point of view of looking at electrons rather than the bronsted lowry definition of looking at the protons. It's essentially the exact opposite. In this theory of acids and bases, anything that will be an electron pair donor is considered to be an acid, and anything that is an electron pair acceptor would be the opposite, would be a base. Sorry, I've got that upside down. Acids are the electron pair acceptors, and bases are the electron pair donors. So everything that Bronsted and Lori talked about and everything that Arrhenius talked about are included in this definition. Take a look at the most basic acid that we can think of, just a plain old proton, H+, and a basic base, hydroxide ion. Because hydroxide has all these electron pairs available to be donated, Lewis would consider it a base. Because hydrogen has space to accept in a pair of electrons, Lewis would consider it to be an acid. Now, everything falls into this category, but it also accepts a few other possibilities that wouldn't be considered otherwise. We've already learned from Bronsted and Lowry's theory that NH3, ammonia, prefers to accept a proton and would therefore be considered a base. It's interesting, however, if I put ammonia into a solution of boron trifluoride, BF3, that the basic solution is neutralized. Now, if a base is neutralized, we must assume that it's being neutralized by an acid. So how is this possible? Well, BF3 has room for an electron pair, and ammonia has an electron pair to donate. Anytime we have an electron pair to donate, Lewis says that is a base. If you have space to accept one, Lewis calls that an acid. So BF3, with no hydrogens at all, could be considered an acid. Now, this definition is, for our point of view, going to be purely academic. I want you to know what Lewis's definition is, but we're not going to be using it in our study of acids and bases. So, because I do want you to understand the basics of the three different definitions, we have in your notes a little chart that is going to compare what Arrhenius, Bronsted, Lowry, and Lewis said about what is an acid or a base. So, let's fill this in here together. All right. From the point of view of Arrhenius, an acid was anything that contained hydrogen and would liberate those hydrogens when you put it into water, when you made a solution with it. Bases were anything that contained hydroxide and would liberate those hydroxides when you put them into water. Bronson and Lowry considered the protons. Acids were anything that could donate a proton to a solution and bases were anything that could accept or remove a proton in a solution. And finally, Lewis called an acid anything that was an electron pair acceptor and a base anything that was an electron pair donor. 
There is lots of practice available for you on different definitions of acids and bases. Your textbook will discuss it more in Chapter 18, and there's a series of questions there, numbers 5 through 11 on page 643. Also, in your workbooks, pages 3 and 4, immediately following our practice on naming acids and bases, has practice for you on definitions of acids and bases, especially the Bronsted-Lowry definition, which we're going to use for the remainder of this unit.